Another lie is, I am what others think about me. So if people think that I'm really good at playing the dulcimer, I must be really good at playing the dulcimer. Now I know that, but you understand what I'm saying. If people tell you that you're really bad at something, or they tell you that you really have no reason to live, or you don't deserve to be here, you can start to believe some of these things. And it can have an impact on the way you live. In this county, there are a number of suicides that have happened over the, over the years. And it seems like in Wapaka High School alone, it, there's one every year or so. It breaks my heart. And I wonder what kind of lies are people telling their friends and their peers that somebody would feel that the only way out is to kill themselves. The truth is that we need to let God tell us who we are and not let the world define us, not let our hating friends or our people around us define us. Our identity is in Jesus Christ. So what does God say that we are? Well, in Galatians 3.26 we read, For you are all sons of God through faith in Christ Jesus. So if you believe in Jesus Christ, you're a child of the King. And as a child of the King, you've got certain privileges and rights. You have the right to live with dignity in this world. You have the privilege to walk with the Holy Spirit moment by moment. John 15, 15, Jesus says, I have called you friends. For all things that I heard from my Father, I have made known to you. God wants to reveal his will to us. He wants to show us what he would like us to do. That's an incredible privilege. That gives us a sense of purpose so that we know who we really are in this world as children of the King. Yes, we are pilgrims. Yes, we are hated by the world just as Jesus was hated. But because we are on his side and he is on our side, we don't need to worry. What can mere man do to us? And the answer is, not much. Not much. Which leads to the next lie. I am how I feel. If I feel far from God, I must be far from God. If I feel like I've fallen out of love with my spouse, well, I must be out of love with my spouse. When we let our feelings go up and down and they fly all over the place, meanwhile, the truth is that faith anchors our emotions. If we can control our thoughts and let them stand firm in the truth of God's Word, then our emotions are not dictating us, but we are in fact choosing our emotions. We are choosing our attitude. Now I know that there are, there are habits that are lifelong, and it's hard to break out of the voices that we hear in our own hearts. That doesn't negate the fact that we are in fact new creations in Christ Jesus. It is also true that there, we are physical beings. Our bodies do get out of whack sometimes. And we do need medication to help us over the hump. But once we're over the hump, we can allow the faith that we have in Jesus Christ to dominate our lives so that we can have the fruit of the Spirit. We can have love. We can have joy and peace in our hearts. We don't have to live defeated lives. So, who are we going to listen to? Well, I think we want to listen to God as opposed to Satan. But the, remember, all the noises of this world are dominated by the lies of Satan. So how are we going to listen to the Father? Where is the voice going to come from that will actually change our hearts? Well, it's not going to be found in the media. You're not going to find it by reading your, the latest bestsellers or music, unless, of course, the music is filled with the Word of God. 
is it is in fact the word of God that is going to begin to change our hearts and our minds so that we really can believe that we are who God says we are. You can't believe what God says if you don't know what God says. And so we need to read his word. Psalm 119.11 Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Where did I get that one wrong? I always mix those up. There's another one out there that says, Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. Those are both great verses and I need to figure out which one is which. But that's okay. Read the Bible. Hear what God says and let it become a part of you. As you read it, well, do what you read. It's not enough to just do your, do your five minutes, close the book, and go on with life. God wants us to be obedient children. He wants us to follow through on what he asks us to do. Also, we need to take time for silence. Silence can be deafening if you allow it to be. Jesus Christ wants us to spend time with him. We do that by shutting off the radio, shutting off the television, closing the door of our prayer closet, and just letting God speak. There's a story in 1 Kings of a man named Elijah who was fleeing for his life from a wicked queen Jezebel and he ran off into a mountain. And God asked him, What are you doing here? And Elijah said, Well, the queen said she was going to kill me, and I was afraid, so I ran away. Now this was the same man who just called fire down from heaven and destroyed 400 prophets of Baal. So you wonder how somebody could be so bold one moment and so timid the next. But if you look at our own lives, we know that that's how it works, isn't it? God told him to come out of his cave and meet him. So Elijah was listening for God. And he heard lots of things, lots of noise. A wind came by. But God was not in the wind. An earthquake came by. But God was not in the earthquake. A roaring fire went through, but God was not in the fire. And then he heard silence, a still, small voice. And that's where God was. If we don't take time to hear what God is saying, we're going to miss it. Remember, I've been saying God is a gentleman. He is not going to force his will on us. We need to make ourselves available to him. That's what he's calling us to do. As we become more comfortable with the silence, then we become aware of God's presence with us. And we can practice his presence in our lives. And it's not just a matter of pretending that God is with us. He really is with us. It's a matter of being in tune to him. It's kind of like turning on the radio in your, in your car. If you don't have a radio on, you don't have the music. And once it's on, it has to be tuned to the right station or you're getting the wrong message. That's the way it is with our spirits. We need to be attuned with his spirit so that we get the confirmation that we are his children and that he is calling us to specific works in this world. One practice that I have been doing the last couple of weeks with my patients as a chaplain uh, is to ask them, what is your favorite story in the Bible? And they might tell me, well, I enjoy Jesus calming the sea. And I'll invite them, well, why don't you imagine in your mind Jesus at the helm of the boat with you scared to death with the storm raging around you and he's standing up, ready to call out to your storm, Peace, be still. And as they call out to Jesus and they start to pray, they have this image of Jesus that helps them. It's kind of like on your Facebook, you've got all of these different contacts, and your contacts have a picture that helps you to know who it is that you're with. And Jesus gives us so many snapshots 
in his word that we can use. And I've talked about imagining us in the story, but imagine Jesus in your life. Imagine him with you, walking with you, and talking with you, just as that him in the garden talks about. We can have that intimate relationship with him. In fact, he wants it. He's ready to give it to us. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you that you tell the truth about us in your word, and I pray that you would help us to uh, become more and more aware of what it is that you want us to be, and in fact, who we are in Jesus Christ. We want to know you more. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.